One of the more remarkable pieces of evidence of bipedality in our Australopithecine past doesn't come from the fossils at all, but rather comes from preserved foot trails at a fossil locality. The locality, Laetoli, is found in Tanzania in the Rift Valley. And at the site are preserved a set of foot trails that include a lot of other animals, but also include a set of hominids walking through fresh ash at the time, much as you might walk through fresh sidewalk cement, and that that hardened and has been preserved for us to study in the fossil record today. As we just saw, our gait, how we move through the environment, is recorded in how our foot makes contact with the ground and the marks left behind. We can study that at Laetoli. What you see on the image on the right here is actually an analysis of a few of the foot trails, a few of the footprints from Laetoli, showing actually the specific depth of the trails and actually what that indicates about the morphology and how a foot has moved across this surface. The image on the body represents one of the footprints from Laetoli. This is work done by Dave Reichlin and colleagues. And you can see the relative depth of the big toe, the heel, and the other toes as well as the, the balls of the feet up here. In the human foot, seen on the top we see a human footprint, you can see there's this big gap that occurs in the middle of the footprint. That gap is caused by two features, the transverse and longitudinal arch of the foot. These arches help provide springy support for us during habitual bipedal locomotion. They're part of the reason we're so effective at lots of long distance walking and long distance movement. We have a built-in support system for our foot, whether or not we're wearing shoes at all. And what we can see if we look at the Laetoli footprint is that it gives tantalizing evidence possibly that both of these features are preserved. There have been arguments about whether or not Australopithecines really do have both the longitudinal and transverse arts that we see in living humans. However, what's clear about Laetoli is the basic structures are very much like our foot today, representing both presumably a deep heel strike and then a movement across the edge of the foot towards the balls of the feet and eventually a push off forward, especially focused on the big toe. This is the same way we walk through the environment today. Now, interestingly, Again, as I mentioned earlier when we were talking about Lucy, one of the ideas about Australopithecus afarensis and how it moved was that it, although it was an obligate biped, it might have moved differently. We saw evidence of this in the hips of Lucy and the fact that she had slightly or relatively broader pelvis than we do today. One reconstruction of that morphology has been that she walked with a bent knee, bent hip gait, as opposed to our relatively straight-legged upright gait. To test this, Reichlin and colleagues actually had people walk with a bent knee, bent hip gait to see what kind of footprints they left behind. That's what we see here in the middle. And again, we can compare and contrast these to evaluate hypotheses about how Australopithecines may have walked. Did they have the same bipedal gait that we did, or a similar one? Or did they have a different one? And if so, in what ways was that bipedal gait different? Researchers are still arguing about this specific question as to whether or not Australopithecus afarensis walked with a bent knee, bent hip gait, or whether they walked with a gait that's more similar to our gait today. But either way, Laetoli provides us remarkable evidence of hominids walking bipedally with the same major structures that we have today. A heel strike, movement and transfer of weight across the foot, and then a push-off focused on the big toe.